underneath everything in your life, there's that thing, that empty, forever empty. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that. Yes. Yes. Yes, I. Yes. The capacity to be alone and, 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 and to perceive. That's been a human challenge, I think, for thousands of years. And, and not just in this society. It's just more difficult now because it's more pervasive and because we all have these devices. And that famous clip with Louis C.K., he's talking about cell phones. And sometimes when things clear away, you're not watching it, you're in your car, and you start going, oh, no, here it comes, <laughs> that I am alone, like it starts to visit on you. <laughs> you know, just the sadness. Yes. Life is tremendously sad just by, you know, being in it. And so you're driving, and then you go, uh, that's why we text and drive. I look around, pretty much 100% of people driving are texting. Yes. And they're killing, everybody's murdering each other with their cars. Yes. But people are willing to risk taking a life and ruining their own, because they don't want to be alone for a second. By not being alone, you never really get a chance to think about yourself. So this is a wonderful way of anesthetizing yourself against uh, any kind of introspection. There used to be television and movies and radio, and in terms of today's favorite anesthetic, I would say it's probably Facebook and the reality shows and, and all those game things. And then, of course, there's pornography. So instead of coming to terms with my lack of ability to love or to care or to feel, you can do all this other stuff. If you look at addicts, and by the way, not just drug addicts, but any addict, gambling, uh, sex addiction, shopping addicts, what's um, missing is uh, sufficient activation in part of the brain's reward motivation um, circuitry, of which dopamine is an important driver. So for the gambling addict, that's the gambling. He's not after the gambling, he's after the dopamine that he's getting. And it's not about the money because when they win the money, they go back next day and they lose the money. So if you look at brain scans of people engaged in compulsive shopping, the same part of the brain will light up as will light up if they do cocaine. If when we look at those people, we don't see the pain that's driving their behavior, it's because we're denying our own pain. And if we are driven to judge them for their compulsive attachment to seeking momentary joy from external source like a drug, it's because we live in a society that's completely addicted to seeking momentary joy from external sources.